Okay, so Be'ezer Sashem, we're continuing today with uh, the third day of Hachana for Hanukkah. And just to review the two stages that we've engaged with so far is the acknowledgement of darkness, the reality of darkness, the knowing that darkness is an element through which HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals himself as what we refer to as the first 24 days of Kislev, which is the secret of Baruch Shem Kavod Malchus Olam Vod, and being present with the darkness, not being surprised by it, not necessarily being overwhelmed by it, but identifying it as what it is, learning to acclimate to the darkness, learning to see the shapes of growth that emerge out of the darkness, learning to realize that in spite of the fact that it appears that I'm blind to the light that I need, nevertheless, the light that I need is still inherent within the darkness itself. It has not taken shape yet, but through the acclimation to darkness, a person comes to realize that the blindness that I assumed was so rich and so thick ultimately is not as intense as I thought it was, and I can begin to see a little bit. I can look at it. I can be mitmod with it. That's the first step. The next step, once I've acknowledged and acclimated myself to the darkness and realized already that this darkness is not so dark because ultimately I could still begin to see the shapes that are emerging within the dark itself. And I have a knowledge or a foreknowledge of the fact that it will ultimately break open and be revealed to be light. So the darkness is softened. And once the darkness is softened, then once I'm able to be present to it, not to run away from it and refuse to name it, but rather to look at it and tame it and domesticate it to one degree or another, then I can begin to crack up at it. Then I can begin to laugh at that element of darkness. And laughing with the darkness is something that I want to clarify prior to going to the next stage. This is not to deny the intensity of whatever one might identify as the darkness in their life, that prevention, that difficulty, that struggle, conscious or unconsciously. It is to acknowledge at this point that it is only by softening the intensity and the power of the darkness that I will be able to possibly find the redemption that lives within it. Because everything is built upon redemption. Everything is built upon revelation and the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch that is present in all things. So the first assumption through the acceptance of darkness is that I'm able to accept darkness because darkness is clearly not outside of the purview of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Hanhaga and within Hashem's unity is this experience of darkness. So I see it within the context of how Hashem is revealing himself to me. Then I'm able to sweeten it and crack it up through laughter. Laughing at the darkness is not ignoring or denying the fact that there is a prevention that needs to be dealt with, that needs to be moved away gotten through, gotten over all of the different possibilities in each and every particular moment, but it's to minimize the intensity of it. It's to make it smaller. It's to crack it up and realize that there's going to be cracks through which the light eventually comes in. And it's that belittling of the darkness, taking it seriously enough to work to belittle it, because it's only by belittling it and laughing at it and poking a hole in what I assume is the sturdy form of darkness that's going to enable me to laugh as the night transitions into the day. Not that there's an actual separation between the night and the day. Over here at the moment of laughter, I'm realizing that it's only through laughing at the darkness of saying ha-ha and ha-ha to the darkness itself that I'm going to begin to crack it open with those elements of laughter. And I'm going to come to the place of believing that there is a light here. I know that there is a light here. I don't know how, I don't know where yet, but I know that there's a lightness that emerges out of laughter that is beginning to come in. Now, the first thing that we do after laughing at the darkness and making it manageable and making it something that I can deal with is we learn to identify elements of darkness as a fundamental reality of lived experience. Meaning to say that only once I laugh at the darkness and I minimize its intensity, can I realize that I can live with darkness in the veld. I can live with a concept of mm. darkness, of choyshech. I can live with the concept of concealment and my spiritual life and my inner psychological well-being is not going to be destroyed as a result of this. That prior to the full acknowledgement that I can incorporate a reality of what I conceive of as a darkness in myself and in the world, that I can incorporate it into my spiritual experience even prior to refining it, but it's not going to be a polar opposition and a negation of my spiritual work. Darkness does not mean that the light that exists is not there. When I find myself in the dark, when I find myself encountering something dark, what I need to come to learn is that, okay, so now I've come to see that there is a coexistence of elements of dark and elements of life uh, and light in my life. 
I am no longer terrified to acknowledge the fact that there is some feeling of darkness, some feeling of concealment in the inner or the outer experience, because now I've come to realize that it is not black or white type of thinking. It's not all or nothing type thinking. There can be the presence of darkness, which does not deny the reality of a light that is also present. And this brings us directly back to my sabratius, where HaKadosh Baruch Hu created an or and a choshech be'irbuvia. There was an, a co-mingling, there was an admixture of of darkness and light. They operated together. And not only did they operate together, but it wasn't even clear to the mind of Chazal, to the Chachm of Moshe, which one was more significant in terms of revealing HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence in this world. That when we learn to acknowledge that there is a concept of concealment in the Velt, which expresses itself through any form of darkness. And then we learn to minimize the power of that darkness by laughing at it and making it something manageable. Then we enable ourselves to incorporate that nature of darkness into our generalized vision of how the world works and how I relate to the world, to other people, and to the Rabbanish Leilam. And I'm able to place it in its proper place to realize that the existence of an element of darkness does not negate the presence of light, but rather it is a reality that light and darkness operate bi'irbuvya, this is what Yavan is. This is what Greek wisdom was in its essence. As Chazal tells us, as the Zohar Kaddish tells us, that the Gullus, the exile of Yavan, is identified with the word Choshech, that it's Tohu Vavohu Beruach Elokim Rechoshech Apnei Tahon, Beruach Elokim Rapechas Apnei Amayim. These four elements in the original process of creation are representative of the four exiles to reveal that they're fundamental necessities that a person must go through in their individual and collective lives. The third exile of Yavon corresponds to the word Choshech. So we see that Choshech and the nature of darkness and the darkening reality of what Yavon tries to represent in our lives and in the world is represented by darkness itself because Yavan, as the Zohar says, are from Klipas Noga. Klipas Noga means that it's an in-between between light and darkness. It's in between the realm of light and darkness. It's both good and bad at the same time. There's an irbuvia to it. And before we work on trying to untangle that, we have to first be bedazzled by the incredible reality that light and darkness can be Mishamish be irbuvia, that the entire world has Chalakim of darkness and Chalakim of light in it. There's an Eitz Hadas Toiv Vira. This is what is so difficult to deal with when it comes to Yavan, because Yavan does not allow us to forget the fact that this world appears on every level to be a composite or a presence of light and darkness that are operating in unison at the very same time. Now, from the perspective of Yavan, the difficulty of that is learning how to compartmentalize, learning how to look at my life and realize that I can have moments of light in my day. I could have moments of connectivity. I could have moments of faith and connection, but I can also experience moments of disconnection and katnus. And that doesn't necessarily mean that my original moments of light and my original moments of comprehension were not real or null and void or insignificant, God forbid. That's what the childish, infantile perspective of all or nothing type thinking or black or white or light and dark type thinking, which splits completely between these two elements. And that's rooted in the sense that these two elements must be coming from a different place. But once we've assumed already on the first day and the second day that the darkness, however thick it seems, is nothing but an expression of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, which comes about through our acknowledgement of it, the acclamation to the darkness, the laughing of the darkness. Now it's abundantly clear to us that this presence of darkness is not an opposition to the light of the Rabban Shalaylam, but rather it's part and parcel of Hashem's revelation in the world. And if so, I am able to tolerate it. It doesn't mean I enjoy it. It doesn't mean I want it. It doesn't mean I stop trying to do everything in my power to undo it. But in the contextualization of my life, Life, the presence of an oppositional force of concealment or darkness or forgetfulness, et cetera, et cetera, each person in accordance with their own heart, it's not in opposition to my relationship with the Rabbi Nishlaylam. It is now contextualized as a playing field where I encounter Hashem. This is the nature of Noga. And when it applies to a person in their lives, it's very difficult because a person needs to fight with every ounce of energy to move towards the light and step away from the darkness, to move away from the things that hold us back, to move away from the things that make us judge ourselves negatively or are filled with shame or re root us back to some place that we don't want to be, we need to put in every ounce of our effort to extricate ourselves from that darkness, to laugh at it and through the laughing to crack it up and to make our legs lighter so that we can run out of it with a leaping force. But I need to recognize, even after the battle of trying to clarify light and darkness and to separate light and darkness, that Oren Choshech, that Meshamish Birbuvya, that Noiga of Yavan, that is Bein HaOr, Bein HaChoshech, like we say in Chazal, that they said to learn Chachmas Yavan. When? In a time that's not day and it's not night. It's like Bein HaShmashos, where it's not day and it's not night. It's the in-between space. It's the threshold. It's the liminal point between 
the apparent opposition between light and darkness. But we have to really, really lean into the fact that we know fully at this point that the light and the darkness are both coming from the same place. Yes, it's our job to untangle them, but they are part and parcel of a fundamental unity. And on a daily mm. level, we are forced through the engagement with Yavan, through the gullus of Yavan that we continue to find ourselves in, to grapple with the reality that there are moments of light and moments of darkness. And even more than that, very often in the very same moment, there's a feeling of light and darkness. So this is the next step of learning how to prepare for Hanukkah, of coming to terms with the fact that there is an or and a choyshech in my life, in the world, in everything. And before we become overwhelmed by the notion that how could there be this basic acceptance of the fact that the human being is going to be forced to live in a world of light and darkness, and there's going to be moments of light and darkness, moments of revelation and concealment, how can that fit in with the radical sense of unity that we're seeking with that Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad of Chaf Hei Kislev that we're trying to get to, we're going to see how this is the next fundamental stage, which will lead us to the next two days, which will bring us closer and closer to Yichad Because it's not only that there's a presence of Choyshech in the world. But in truth, the presence of the Choyshech in the world, the encounter with Choyshech, the human acknowledgement that there are elements of concealment in the world, there are things that are unfathomable, there are things that are painful, there are things that are frightening, there are things that are difficult. And again, this acceptance bears no impact on how I deal with other people. This is ultimately how I deal with my relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu in relationship to these difficult things that I encounter. In the realm of human volitional activity, a person and like we've said over and over, must have serenity prayer every moment. First and foremost, I have to discern whether there's something I can do to fix the situation or whether there's nothing that I can do to fix the situation. If there's something that I can do to fix the situation, then it falls under the rubric of Bechira and Ishtadlus, and I need to do everything I can possibly do to extricate myself from that darkness or to untether myself from that darkness. But once I've clarified that there's not much more that I can do and that there's the basic kernel of irreducible darkness that exists within human experience, so it's in that place that we're talking about how to be mismoided with it, how do we contextualize the experience? And over here, we have to realize that every moment of concealment or darkness in a person's life that remains, that puts me into that place where I don't see Hashem, where I don't feel Hashem, where I don't feel worthy of being connected to Hashem, where I don't believe in my belief in Hashem, where I'm not fully attuned to the fact that, yes, beneath all of my ruminations and my thoughts, there is simply a silent infinitude of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's breath that animates all of existence at every moment in the past, in the present, and in the future, leading up to the unimaginably pleasurable experience of divine revelation of Yichud that exists in every moment, that there is an element of Choyshech. And this Choyshech that I encounter is in truth the motivation to a deeper level of light. Every time an individual experiences Choyshech, every time an individual experiences being part of the Yichud Tata, the daily lowercase t traumas of daily experience, it's another opportunity for me to remember that there is light and dark, and it's my job to choose the light. It's my job to choose to associate and orient myself towards the light. And that is going to force me to reorient how I deal with the presence of Choyshech. I understand that there's Choyshech, but what is Choyshech? What is the Tachlis of Choyshech? Why is there the split nature of reality? Why is it to be in that place of the noiga between the light and darkness? What's the tachlis? How does it operate? And so we're going to look at Rav Tzadok quickly, where Rav Tzadok says as follows. That when it comes to grasping anything, it only comes about by way of a previous concealment, by way of what the Zohar Kaddish explained, that it's only through the experience of some element of pain that a person is going to be capable of experiencing some element of pleasure afterwards. Because in truth, pleasure and knowledge, they emerge out of their opposites. And this is the secret of the ascendancy of the light that comes about specifically in relationship to the darkness itself. Why? What's this darkness that a person is experiencing? So Rav Tzadok continues and he says, because when it comes to grasping anything, what we have to understand is that it follows the mechanism of how Hashem created the world. In the beginning, there was dark, and afterwards, there was light. That the creation of existence was through understanding the emergence of light specifically out of its opposite. And it's only possible when there is that experience of darkness prior to. As the Pasuk says, Ki because I sat in darkness, as Hashem Orli. 
that it's not that I sat in darkness and then suddenly Hashem was light to me, but specifically because I was able to acknowledge the fact that there is darkness in the world. You are in truth a God who conceals himself in order so that we can have the capacity of free choice, which is the secret of the kalim, the building of the vessels necessary for illuminating the darkness, for revealing ultimately that the darkness is nothing but an expression of the light. That's what we're going to come to when we come to Shema Yisrael and Chaf Hei Kislev. But right now in the realm of Chaf Dalid Kislev, in the first 24 days of Baruch Shem, we have to see darkness as the moment where I am able to reveal a deeper level of light because it's my choice to react to the darkness by choosing the light, as we saw. That certainly it's from a good world, as the Maisa of the Balabayas and the Areach tells us. The Pasuk says, Yeshav Choyshech Sitro, he sits in the darkness of concealment, that a Kaddish Baruch who conceals himself within the darkness, and in accordance with the intensity of the darkness and concealment, so too is going to be the intensity of the concealed light that a person is capable of grasping as a result of their acknowledgement of that Choyshech itself, as the Pasuk says, that they will request you and search you out from there, from there specifically, Daika Misham, Ubekashta Misham, from that place of Tzara, Es Tzara Hiliakov Mimeni Yivashaya, that over here in these psukim, there's no denial of darkness. There's an acknowledgement that there's a darkness here. That there's an acknowledgement that there's a tzimtzum, that, that there's a refusal, that there's a concealment, that there's a withholding, that there's a prevention. But it's specifically in that acknowledgement that we're able to say, but that just highlights and magnifies the fact that the light is also ever present. How powerful must this light that is able to coexist with darkness, how powerful and how rooted in the infinite it must be. And this on a practical level brings us directly in line with the avoida of of preparation for Hanukkah and experiencing the light of Hanukkah. Rabbi Nachman himself explains in the second teaching in the second volume of Lukut Maran that the light of Hanukkah is the light of the Sha'ashu'e Oilam Haba. It's the playfulness. It's the emergence of that inner pleasure that comes about through that internal back and forth, that expression and reception and return to expression and return to reception that exists not within two separate parties, which is typically nece necessary for any movement, but rather it takes place within the self. It's the autogenesis of the emergence of the self out of itself through the encounter with the self, through the concealment of the self that leads to more revelation. That's the secret of the Sha'ashua, of that inner playfulness, of that back and forth, that running up and hitting a barrier of the self that is there in order Order to reorient the emergence of the self to express itself in an even more potent and powerful way. It's the back and the forth, the ruts of the shoyv, the mati v'loy mati b'vasachas. It's the aleph, aleph beis, aleph beis gimel, aleph beis gimel dalad, the shir pashat kafel meshul shemruba, which is the secret of lighting of the candles. Those shashuim, that inner experience, that silent experience prior to emergence, which is the emergence of the experience itself, is the tachlis of Hanukkah. And what is that? What are those shashuim oylem haba? It's gratitude. What is gratitude? What is the nature of gratitude? You may hoda that Rabbi Nachman is trying to cultivate for us as the tool, as the lumdus, as the frame of experience necessary for mining the product of Hanukkah to the best ability that we have. And what Rabbi Nachman describes is that hoda is not simply praising Hashem. It's not simply acknowledging HaKadosh Baruch Hu as the absolute infinite source of all things devoid of any concealment. That's not a place of hoda. That's a place of yichud and his boininus. Hoda'a, gratitude, is something that emerges specifically from from a moment prior to it that was concealed and it was difficult. There was a tsara, there was a difficult, there was a constriction, there was an encounter with the hither side of experience, with the half of the world and the half of experience that appears to be concealed and covered over in concealment and the choysha chakafula mechupal and all of the, the noga of it all, the stuckness of it all. It's specifically from within the tsara, from within that death expressive experience that conceals the mind, that puts me face to face with the vulnerability of it all, that encounter of not being able to serve Hashem, of forgetting everything, of not remembering, of being concealed within a cave, etc., etc. It's in accordance with that hiddenness that the light of memory is going to emerge afterwards. This is the secret of Birchas HaGoymel, that there are Dalet Shetzrichem Lehoides, there are four individuals, and we are all, all of those four individuals, as Rabbi Nassim explains, that we encounter on a regular basis these experiences that bring us to the brink of ourselves, that bring us to the brink of our spiritual selves, our psychological selves, our emotional selves, our religious selves, our physical selves, and every moment, as we see from Davin Malka Mashiach and Safran Shel Tehillim, as the Tzadik of Usher Freund, Schus Yogan Aleinu, 
really brought down into the world through the lens of Rabbi Nachman and the author of Navarduk is ultimately that every rega in this world is walking on the brink of life and death. It's walking on the brink of Oren Choyshech, where Oren Choyshech are Meshamish Birbuvya and Gehenim and Ganeidan share a barrier. And it's in that place that a person comes to a place of Arba Tzrichem Lahoydois, that Rabbi Nishlelem, if it's not for you who's protecting me on every level, Azavari Tibioni, I would have been stuck in the darkness long ago. You are the one who is Shemir Meraglaim. You are the one, says David Melech, that allows me to traverse the delicate boundary between Or and Choyshech and to consistently find myself in Or, no matter what I thought I was finding myself in, because it's the consciousness of a Jew, wherever they find themselves, that transforms the moment itself into Or. So wherever David Malka Mashiach looked, the Ainayim of Malchus, wherever we look, we see Or. But the secret of guiding our feet properly to traverse the delicate boundary of Or and Choyshech, that's the secret of Birchas HaGoymel, of realizing Hashem, without you, I'm not going to survive in this world for one moment. And this is the secret of the institution of saying Hoidu on Erev Shabbos from the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. As Rabbi Nassim explains that a Yid has to mamish feel as Shabbos enters that I'm leaving death and entering into life. I'm leaving Choyshech and entering into Or. It's the Hoida that comes about specifically out of the Tzara. It's the Shlemus, the fulfillment that comes about specifically out of the feeling of deficiency and lack, as Rabbi Nachman describes. And it's this tchuna that needs to be uncovered for Hanukkah, which means that we're still in the process of we're yorde hayam ba'anios. We're in the moment of the tsara. We're in the chafdalid yamim of kislev. We're in the darkness. We're in the concealment where we're finally coming to terms with, okay, there's darkness. Okay, I can laugh at the darkness. Once I can laugh at the darkness, let me make room for the darkness in the world, in the veldt, in my life, and let me separate it and let me identify it for what it is. And most importantly, let me then learn to utilize it it as a stepping stone to reveal a deeper level of light, a deeper level of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in this world, because every ounce of Choyshech that I encounter and I put on the side and I transform into light and I allow myself to utilize it after serenity prayering it, to really see where the light that I can mine here is, it's going to reveal the profound level of emergence of a doubled level of light. It's the transformance, it's the transformation of the darkness itself into light which we're going to get to, Be'ezra Sashem, in the next day. But today is about making room for the darkness, recognizing the role of darkness, recognizing that it comes from the same place that light comes from, and transforming it into a stepping stone to reveal an even higher level of light, because I can tolerate, I can tolerate what it means to live in Or and Choyshech. The Malachim can't tolerate this. Without this Hishtamshus of Or and Choyshech Be'erbuvia, this admixture of light and darkness, there would be no Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the emergence of the light that comes specifically out of that, where retroactively we're able to reveal that the darkness is nothing but light, that there is no darkness. That's what we're going to get to. That's the Yichadila, but for now we're still recognizing the role that darkness plays. And it's here where we live in the Or and the Choyshech, the, the Ches and the Aleph of it, which is Roshay Tevos, Chachmas Amuna, which is the sound of Cha Cha Cha, as Rabbi Nachman's Talmidim said, that the laughter is the unity between the day and the night, the recognition of Choyshech and then Or, Ches and then Aleph. There's the eight nights of Hanukkah that are connected to the first night of Hanukkah, the Ches and the Aleph, the Choyshech and the Or, which is the secret of Cha Cha Cha, which is the laughter and the Schoik of Hanukkah, of cracking it up so that I can now make room for it. Laughter comes about specifically by the interrelationship between the light and the darkness. And to connect it back to the Misa of the Oireach, we see that this book that he finds, this very powerful book that he wants to encounter, he sees what are these books? It's a book that has all of the vessels in it. It's a book that has all of the letters. And he tries to run after that book and he tries to grab hold of that book that can allow him to build the vessels out of the letters and ultimately it gets tangled up in a tree of gold, etc., etc. Gold represents kavura. Gold represents concealment and choyshech. It's far darker than silver. It's that encounter with the desire to build kalim. We need kalim. Kalim come about through tzimtzumim, through the moments of darkness, through the choyshech in a person's life, through the shichacha. Every ounce of a descent and a dip into a place of spiritual forgetfulness is where I am going to fundamentally need to pull myself back up, thereby revealing that the darkness was a motivation towards a new revelation of light. And it's specifically in those Kalim, that we uncover the secret of the light that is built specifically through the darkness, the utilization of every ounce of darkness for a Kli to be Megala, a new or We're still operating, again, it's important that we be patient. We're still operating with the light and the darkness being Meshamish Birbuvya. We need to encounter all of these levels of the Chaf Dalad Yoyman of Baruch Shein Kavod Malchus Lambad prior to encountering the light of Shema, where we're going to negate any difference between light and darkness, because all there is is light, and the Choyshech is a higher level of light. But we're not there yet. Here 
here we're still living in the separation between the two of them and the secret is learning how to be b'nei adam that are m'shabeach HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because every moment of our lives is a sha'ashua and being taken out of death and being brought into life as the Baal Tanya said and we said it yesterday that the ikr joy of Hanukkah is the joy of being alive because if a person were to realize that every moment is a yitzia from he'edar and a giloy of yesh that every moment I'm emerging out of nothingness into somethingness back into nothingness back into somethingness then every moment of my life would be filled with the deepest takara and hoida'a of the sha'ashuim from the deficiency into the fullness from the fullness back into the deficiency and it's specifically these kalim that we're trying to grab the Iraq wants this book of kalim he knows that in order to kindle the lights, we first have to prepare the vessels. In order to find the Shem and Zayas, we have to first have the Ketisha, the crushing, the Bittel Atzmi, the Hishtoikikus, the, 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 the process of refinement in order to uncover the untold light that is standing at the ready to be revealed in the secret of Ko. But prior to Ko, we still find ourselves in the Dachus and the sadness and the difficulty and the darkness of it and the impoverishment of it, which leads us to reveal the secret Chachma Sa'amuna, the Chachacha, the laughter when we utilize the darkness itself and the kalim themselves to be Megala, a deeper form of light. The Helga Shomer Amunim, Rav Aral Arat, brings from the Kadmoinim, he says that when David HaMelech says that what it means is that each and every day of experience, the day represents revelation, the day represents connectivity. Each and every day we'll be able to communicate very clearly to each and every other day what its spiritual benefits were, what the benefits of spirituality that were uncovered during the day were, what the light was. But is that every nighttime moment of a person's life, every concealment, every moment of choyshech, every moment of a maniyah, or a maniyah samoyach, or a maniyah salev, is going to seek out from each and every night, every moment of night, and say, "New, what did you gain? What did you find? What did you uncover in that darkness that couldn't have been revealed in the light?" And it's going to be the song of the nighttime that is going to emerge into the laughter of the day because we utilize the choyshech to be the motivating factor to extend the palace of light. This is the birur of klipas noga. This is how we refine yavan. Every moment that we find ourselves in a nirbuvia, we identify the nakuda of light and we uncover it and we utilize it for avodas Hashem and for His karvis to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And we allow ourselves to let go of all of the darkness that is no longer necessary and to throw away the inessential husks, which appear to be so fundamentally inherently connected to our lives, but ultimately our choyshech that needs to be removed and needs to be let go of, but only for the purpose of revealing the nakuda and the kernel of light that emerges out of it. This is the secret of the sudas of Hanukkah, which are not a chiyuv, they're a rishus. Why are they a rishus? Because it's the secret of nighttime, it's the tefillah of mariv, where we have to choose between yes or no, where we have to choose between night or darkness. This is the secret of the birurim of Klipas Noga, which is the transformation of the reality of a darkness and a light that are Mashamish Biruvya to utilize the darkness itself to add upon the light, to add more light, to be Moisifahilech more and more. And Ba'ezra Sashem, once we can learn to grapple with the coexistence and the commingling of light and darkness in our lives and the fundamental understanding of the role of those pockets of darkness in our lives will be able to move forward to the next stage where the darkness stops being darkness itself and the darkness starts to just be another expression of light which can only be expressed by way of darkness because it is rooted in a far higher place than the typical light that we have access to Ezra Sashem.